to start off this morning, uh, we have a follow-up session from the Brain Forum 2015, where we'll hear overviews from the major brain projects that have been launched around the world. Uh, today, we have us uh, with us representatives from the Blue and Human Brain and Projects, uh, a European-based project building biologically detailed digital reconstructions and simulations of the rodent and ultimately the human brain. We have the Chinese Brain Initiative, China Brain, which is focused on developmental, psychiatric and neural degenerative disorders with the aim to find treatments primarily for Alzheimer's disease and autism. The US Brain Initiative, launched by President Obama. The Allen Institute for Brain Science, which is elucidating mouse and human cortal cell types and constructing the Brain Observatory the Japanese Brain Minds Project, and the European Centre TBI Project, looking at traumatic brain injury. So, an awful lot to digest in the next hour or two. To begin with, I would like to invite, please, Professor Mu Ming Pu from the China Brain Project to come to the stage. We'll have short presentations followed by the Q&A as of yesterday. Warm welcome, thank you. Good morning. Uh, it's my great honor and great pleasure to uh, give you an update of China Brain Project. The China Brain Project was basically organized by two main funding agencies of China, the Ministry of Science and Technology, the uh, Natural Science Foundation of China, or NSF equivalent. Um, the proposal was submitted uh, a year ago uh, March uh, 2015, and uh, the proposal uh, we call China Brain Project is a 15-year proposal. It's a very comprehensive uh, project on both the brain science and brain-inspired intelligence technology. And this uh, project was formally approved a few uh, months ago by the State Council, and the uh, go-ahead is expected uh, later this year and the funding mechanism uh, is currently being worked out. Uh, the, I want to speak about the research environment which uh, the China Brain Project will be carried out. The, we noted that the uh, manpower for uh, brain research is rapidly increased. The uh, number of neuroscientists, uh, both the homegrown talent and overseas returnees, uh, mostly trained abroad in US and in uh, Europe, are increasing. The Chinese Society for Neuroscience now cur currently has a member of 6,000, which is small, uh, uh, it's about one-tenth of that of the uh, US. But it's doubling every five years. And this doubling is actually supported well by the continuing increase in the funding. And the funding is doubling for research and development every five years. So it's, it's matched exactly the increase in funding. And the funding is continuing increasing um, the current R&D funding for the entire country is uh, two, about 2.1 percent of the GDP, and the government expected to uh, reach a goal of 2.5 of percent by uh, year 2020. So there's a, a, a good prospect, despite the slowing of the economy. These, uh, there's a strong interdisciplinary support in China. Uh, basic uh, science and engineering are very strong, and they are all interested in brain science. So it's a good opportunity. And there's a large population of brain disease patients. And this is a go without saying with a large country like China. Large number of AD patients, PD, uh, depression, autism, epilepsy, all these uh, uh, require uh, development of uh, uh, therapy and prevention uh, tools. And also there is a large uh, abundant resources of uh, non-human primates. And this would uh, make the, uh, the development of a non-human primate disease model uh, 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 very advantageous. Finally, I think there's a tradition of social mobilization in China. When the government decides uh, a, a very clear goal, uh, it's uh, uh, possible for, for large-scale mobilization both of the scientists and health-related uh, uh, organizations. So uh, there's a good uh, environment. And the uh, basic uh, key obje objectives of China Brain Project can be described as follows. Uh, the center or the pillar of the project is to understand the neural basis of cognitive function. 
uh, that include the development of brain research technology platforms, uh, the basic science. Now, there are all two arms uh, for, for this project. One is to uh, disease-oriented, this is to very specifically uh, devoted to develop effective uh, approaches in early diagnosis and early intervention of major brain diseases. The other side of the application is to develop brain machine intelligence uh, technology, and I'll describe a little bit later the, the content of this too. And uh, we call this structure, this scheme, one body, two arm, uh, an airplane waiting to fly. Uh, the core component, or the basic component of the cognitive process, um, this uh, research are very similar to every, uh, all the uh, neuroscience going on in other parts of the world. Uh, basically, we want to do mapping of the brain, and then from there, we uh, try to understand the brain. The mapping we are considering has two, three components. We need to map the all cell types of all brain regions. Uh, we don't even know uh, how many cell types are there in many parts of the brain. So single cell gene profiling is one of the approach currently being carried out in, uh, in many places. And, uh, and the second type of mapping is connections. Now we are specifically referring to connections at the mesoscopic level, that is at a cellular resolution, so we can uh, follow the cells and their uh, processes, their connections, the uh, mapping of structure of the brain. The third mapping is mapping of activity uh, associated with a specific function. From there, we hope the, uh, we can proceed to understand the, the brain process. We want to understand, as everybody else do in the, in the uh, science community, the genetic programs that determine the, the building blocks of the brain the molecules and the cell types, and also how these molecules and cells uh, establish specific uh, connections, what we call neural circuit, that, that can perform uh, brain functions and animal behaviors. Now, animal models uh, currently used most widely uh, around the world is rodents. So we, we hope that the Chinese brain project would start to work on macaque monkeys uh, uh, for as a man annual model. Uh, many of the technologies developed for the mapping cell types and mapping connections in the rodent will be applied uh, to uh, macaque monkeys. And this would be very helpful for matching this uh, information with human brain, uh, especially uh, currently we need to know many of the uh, human imaging uh, uh, phenomena, with the imaging data, which we need to interpret them at a cellular level, having a, a species like macaque, which with the both macroscopic brain imaging and the mesoscopic connections, then we can really uh, compare that to the human brain and understand many of human brain imaging data. And so that's a uh, goal of the, uh, these basic science uh, pro uh, programs. We need to do, uh, to set up many uh, technologies and platforms which are very similar to those are currently being carried out in the US and Europe, single cell profiling, circuit tracing, brain imaging technology, uh, in vivo physiology, electrophysiology and electrochemical recording, uh, recording of act brain activity as well as the molecules uh, secreted uh, uh, by the uh, cells, uh, neurons. Um, the neuromodulation technology, uh, information processing platform, and uh, animal model system, transgenic non-human primate will be a focus. So these are the, uh, the uh, uh, platform to be established. For the applied arm of this project, the early diagnosis and the inter early intervention of brain disorders will be focused on three types of major brain disorder. The developmental disorder, autism, mental retardation, uh, psychiatric disorder, depression, or addiction, for example. Uh, neurodegenerative disease, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's. Now we call this three category of uh, disease, disease of the young, the developmental, disease of the uh, adult, psychiatric disorder, and disease of the old, the neurodegenerative disease. Three, three areas. To, uh, to uh, focus on this, we need to understand, as we are doing now, uh, to the disease mechanism. Basic science scientists uh, are all interested in to understand the disease mechanism as they are part of their uh, studies of the brain. Genetics and epigenetic factors and pathophysiological 
uh, circuit dysfunction are all the uh, mechanisms that uh, are in, of interest. There are also, uh, we are currently, like uh, many people, and we heard a lot about this yesterday, the uh, development of really early diagnostic tools are very important, very urgent. This include genetic markers, molecular marker, imaging marker, as well as the cognitive functional marker. Uh, we need a very effective set of easily used, widely applicable uh, functional tests, quantitative tests, that we can detect early functional deficit. And, and these are uh, very much needed in, in the field. Uh, having developed the tools, the, the next step would be developing intervention approaches. This including pharmacological uh, drugs, uh, physiological intervention and physical intervention, uh, stimulation uh, uh, approaches. Now all this would, would need to have a, uh, animal models that are appropriate for developing of these tools and the uh, primate model would be uh, very useful, uh, especially for uh, developing a mod modulation uh, uh, technology. And we uh, uh, hope the various uh, species of monkey, uh, Cynomogus, Rhesus, and Marmoset would be all be useful. And we'll hear more about Marmoset work uh, in a minute from the Japan uh, Brain Mind Project. A clinical research platform associated with uh, the applications include database for brain imaging uh, data, uh, national blood-based biobank uh, uh, and brain bank, and also training, the health, uh, brain health training and education centers where are planned for this, uh, in this project. Uh, in the apply arm, the other apply arm, the brain machine interface uh, would be one of the uh, main targets. These are also uh, of uh, medical uh, uh, implications. The effective uh, interfaces and also the, uh, the new uh, electrical, magnetic, ultrasonic, neuromodulation technique, brain-inspired neural network models uh, and computing uh, methods, uh, new architecture for the artificial intelligence uh, neural network uh, models. Uh, there are uh, softwares for the AI. And also the hardware, the brain-inspired computing, processing, and storage devices uh, are uh, part of, the, of, of interest to many people uh, in China. And also the uh, brain-inspired robotics. Right? So these are very much uh, in line with the European uh, brain, uh, uh, human brain project, as well as uh, many of the priorities in the uh, US uh, brain initiative. So I think there's a lot of room for collaborations uh, I want to t t talk specifically on the monkey, primary research. There are uh, large monkey resources in China. There are many breeding companies located in different provinces. The current total number of colonies, uh, Sanomogus, about a quarter million, uh, and Rhesus, and there are large number produced each year. So this is a good resources. The goal of the China uh, brand uh, Human, non-human primary research are several. One is we want to study the cognitive function using the non-human primary as an animal model. Uh, second, we want to generate genetic modified monkey as, uh, uh, for human disorder for testing the, uh, uh, the uh, early diagnosis, early intervention tools. Thirdly, we want to, uh, I think this is very important, to develop a training and education programs that for a sustainable research in primary neurobiology. I think in the long run, uh, 20, 30 years from now, we, we would need a lot of young, uh, the new generation of uh, scientists who are working on this particular model because it's so important to our human health and uh, diseases. And for that, we also have to establish rigorous ethical practice of monkey research in China. Uh, uh, learning the lesson from the West. And the public communication on the importance of non-human primary research will, will be very important. I will uh, spend all of effort doing the, uh, both of this. Finally, three, very briefly, uh, the progress for uh, example of progress. For example, recently we produced uh, in our own institute in Shanghai a uh, autism model, a uh, human gene uh, duplication, uh, MECP2, is known to cause autism, one form of autism disease. We put a human MCP2 gene in the monkey, produced uh, um, uh, monkeys which show 
uh, clear incorporation of the transgene in their chromosome. I have scattered many copies in different chromosomes, and this, uh, this incorporation didn't disrupt the native genes. And it shows many uh, artistic phenotypes, including repetitive motion, abnormal social interactions, higher stress, uh, as stereotype cognitive behaviors, all these are very in useful for studying the structural and functional uh, aspects of the artistic brain. Uh, we are currently carrying out this. If we also, as a model for primary research, you need to have um, produce a sufficient number of uh, monkeys. So the slow generation time of a cat is a problem. So recently we developed a method to speed up the generation time. For example, the natural, stim natural uh, uh, sexual maturation is slow, uh, four to six years, and then get the sperm from the monkey, do the in vitro fertilization, and then get the, the, the uh, monkey. It's a, it's a slow process. And the, uh, we discovered that by incubating the tes testicular tissues of the young monkey or before sexual maturation can speed up the sperm maturation. And then from this, we obtain a, a, a second generation of monkey by in vitro fertilization. Uh, within two and a half years. In fact, we generated a second generation artistic monkey uh, through these methods. I think this is a, a big plus in using Macad as a monkey model. Thirdly, finally, uh, the, we have done some basic research on high cognitive functions of, of Macad. We show that Macad which are known in the field of primary biology to be incapable of self-recognition mirror. We found we can train them through a, a, a visual somatosensory association training, extensive training. They can acquire the ability of, of recognizing themselves in the mirror, passing all the standard tests. And now we're studying uh, brain imaging study to see the monkey before and after this training, what happened to their brain. So this is an example to the work that's going on in, in China, in my own institute in Shanghai. Thank you. <laughs>